The M3 and RS4 have been rivals and performance icons for decades. But as they've grown larger and more expensive, BMW and Audi have created smaller models to fill in the gap. So we gathered the M235i and S3 to understand how well these new rivals carry on the tradition. So Todd and I have driven this car before. This is the S3 that we're starting with. Well, actually we haven't, but in a way we have. We've driven the A3 in its most basic form with the 1.8 liter turbo with only front wheel drive. We weren't that impressed to be honest. However, the two liter with Quattro can be a, a decent little entry level German car. Then we've recently driven the Golf R, the 2015 Golf R of which this car has the running gear. So we've driven the A3, we've driven the Golf R. This is kind of a discussion about which body style and badge would you like. And I say that because the S3 is the $10,000 more four-door sedan version of the Golf R. This car starts at only three or four grand more than the beginning of the Golf R, but spec'd out like we have here, which isn't everything, but is a lot, it's running 50 grand. So here we are for the Germans, in an entry-level sports car, the enthusiast driving kinds of car that you and I look for. So while I would have loved to have had two four-doors for this test, this two series is the base BMW in the country right now, and it's only sold as a two-door. So it's not a direct comparison in body style, but it is a direct comparison in the fact that these two manufacturers, this is the lowest car they sell in their lineup, then hot it up to be the hottest version of their lowest car. I know it's weird. Follow along. This gets better. It's also the M235i. So does that make it an M car? Is it a replacement for the 1M? Not really on both counts. In spite of what feels like 45 M badges in this car. I see the reason for this very, very niche model. It's, it's not something for everybody. And I always wonder, and BMW is the king of this, by the way, figuring out little tiny slivers of a market in between the sliver they already have. I swear, it seems like if they could figure out a car 50 people would buy, they're going to make it. I fully expect to have like the 1.5 series and the 2.5 series, but at the moment we don't get a 1 series in the US. This is the little baby. I'm a little bit mixed about the styling on the 2 series. I like that it's a longer wheelbase than the 1 series. It just feels a little bit more substantial, that much better. From the rear, I kind of feel like this car is a little bit on the bland side. The front, classic BMW, it's so purposeful and aggressive. And then look at this scallop shape along the door side, kind of an undercut here, but it's a very sculptural one and it works with everything else going on. It's really quite a good looking car. Styling-wise, this is kind of that muscular, short cheerleader who put on a great fitting dress. This has got a nice, aggressive look about it, but it isn't flashy. For me, when I see it in person, it starts to feel a little bit squatty and vertical in its styling, but it isn't unattractive. It still looks purposeful. On the outside, the S3 isn't shouting. It doesn't say, really look at me. Of course, the color does, but I like how it sits. I like the stance of the car. Compared to other Audis that are very busy inside, that have a lot going on, yeah, this is pretty pared back. This is pretty simple. What I do like about the interior on the S3, and of course the A3, is the screen here. The nav screen that can be fully retracted. It leaves everything very clean. And I do like these jet turbine eyeball air vents here. I, I like them. I like what this is doing. Now, Audi has gorgeous technology in the technology interface. All of the switches feel wonderful. A lot of the tactile points in the car are superb. But material-wise and design, I submit to you that because it's Audi, we talk about it being clean and minimalist. If it was in another car, I think we'd call it boring. Should it be? Well, yeah. I kind of like that it's in keeping with the exterior styling. The seats themselves are good, but you get them on a back road and you realize they're not great. These are much better cruiser seats in spite of how aggressive they look and I have played with the seat every time I've gotten in the car, with the seat all the way to the floor, I'm 6'3", and my head is mostly touching the headliner all the time. Now, the difference is this comes with a sunroof the Golf R does not. Interior-wise, you didn't gain $10,000 better interior than you did on the Golf R we drove. 
Sitting here in the interior, the 235i seems to harken back to the E46 generation's theme and proportions. Now on one hand, that's a compliment. So the ergonomics are good again, but aside from the screen, which appears to be wedged into the top of the IP, the buttons and controls just look simple. Too simple in comparison to the rest of the interior. They almost look like the subsequent generation to the E46, forgetting there's years of development between this car and that. I want more information and additional digital interaction. You know, because this is the base BMW, some of the plastics, especially down low, where you're not gonna touch much, the cup holders and the cubbies, that stuff feels no different than a $30,000 car. Where it gets nice is up in the upper touch points and the places that you are gonna interact with, that starts to feel like a more premium car, but the real victory on the interior of this BMW is these seats. You can get the perfect body position in this car, and you can not only get comfortable, but you can make the seat any width you need. The bolsters themselves will adjust, so you have any option that you want. You can also just cruise in these seats, and they're very comfortable. I really could go on and on about the seats. I will spare you. The problem is that, of course, there's not a lot of usable room in the back. Just as much legroom as that S3. The issue is just about headroom. The headroom, unless you're about 5'9 or less, there's just not going to be enough. Clear, there's a business case for the Volkswagen Group to sell this car. So, of course, they've got to use all the parts available. They're not necessarily going to always do bespoke running gear, a different engine. So while this is an all-wheel drive Audi, it is not the same Quattro system that you get in its bigger brother, the A4 or the S4 for that matter. It's built on the same Volkswagen chassis. It has the exact same engine, horsepower, torque, and running gear as that Golf R. So it is essentially a tiny front wheel drive car unless the off chance it might need some rear wheel drive thrust. Most of the time, honestly, there's no sense this car is all wheel drive. On paper, this is a little quicker and it has a little bit less horsepower. In comparison to the M235i, it is fast. There's no doubt about it. It had to be. But I'm just wondering to myself, why couldn't there be a little bit more? Is Audi saving something in reserve for the RS3? Is there an RS3 coming? We certainly hope so. Now, of course, the S3 does not come with a manual transmission. The Beamer has a manual, guess what, the manual's more fun. But I'm not sliding this S3 for that because it's just not available. It has the DSG, to my surprise, the throttle response in this DSG is a little bit better than the one in that Golf R. It doesn't take quite as much pedal pressure to really get the car to wake up and do something fun. Sometimes this transmission impresses me. Other times, it really sucks. But when you're hard on the gas and you're just clicking through the paddles here, it's very quick. The bottom half of the gas pedal in the S3 is really aggressive. I mean, that part feels great. If you're gonna drive this car or the Golf R around floorboarded most of the time, you're gonna be pretty happy. It's partial throttle when you find yourself going, shouldn't I be getting more out of the car at this point? No doubt, this car is fast. When you kick it hard, it really goes. But then that's the problem, and it's the exact same problem that we discovered with the Golf R. You have to kick it hard. Now, we drove the 228i with the DSG on the track and were pleasantly surprised by it. I mean, I made the comment then that was the secret hiding enthusiast car in BMW's lineup. So compared to that car, just to give you a frame of reference, this has almost 100 more horsepower and torque than that 228i. It is a significantly faster car. I joke sometimes about torque being a plateau. If you look at the dyno sheets of this car, it is absurd. This M235i has full torque at 1300 RPMs, and it hangs out between 1300 and 4500 RPMs. And listen to that engine. Isn't this what we love about BMWs? Delightful inline six. Who else does a car like this? It's back to old school, but it's new school. 
because it has so many things that activate. You have lots of settings on your drivetrain and throttle response. You do, of course, have Eco Pro because you're not just Eco, you're a pro at it. But you're probably not going to be running it in that if you ever drive hard. And so you've got comfort mode, which is okay. Sport, which guess what, is, is better. And guess what? Again, Sport Plus is even more better. Wow. The feeling you get when you plant it out of a corner. Your exit speed in this car is great. And there's a point in the steering. There's, you turn it over and you keep turning harder and harder. And it just keeps getting better and more communicative and more feel. You can no longer say that the hydraulic steering rack has better feel. I'm done with that argument. In this car, the 2 Series, specifically the M235i, there's loads of information here. The big thing you notice in the steering of this car is that it spins right beneath you. The balance feels fantastic. It doesn't have a sense of weight in the front or the tail. Really easy, simple to drive quickly here because it absorbs bumps just fine. There's a few bumps in this road, but there's no hop around. Even without LSD and all that, I'm actually doing really well on just feeling the balance, rotating the car, incredibly confidence inspiring. The first time I got into this car and really seriously started interacting with it, driving it, sitting here, spending time here, it felt like the next generation E46. So it's like back to basics. It's back to this enthusiast driving thing with the M235i. It's the kind of car that you want to go canyon carving with your friends. It's the kind of car that you could commute easily in. It's a brilliant driving car. It's that rotation that is the biggest difference in feel between this and the S3. Well, that and the driving position. And once you hop out of this into the S3, you really do notice the difference in the balance. This car is great. It's fun. I like the size. Personally, the A4 has grown so large, it's not that same nimble dynamic that I've really loved about these Audis. I want to like the driving experience as much as I like everything else about this car. That's the biggest thing that I keep thinking about. We can drive fast on these roads, we can hustle this car, but the feedback that, hmm, I, am I really loving this? That doesn't always come through with the S3. When you throw the S3 into a corner, it just operates like a front wheel drive car. It feels just like that, especially compared to the BMW. The weight in the S3 feels very much over the nose. You can really sense that it's ahead of you. At higher speeds, that back end of the car starts to float a little bit. It starts to become unsure of itself. And therefore, it starts to make you readjust your driving style, and in some cases, a little bit slower. However, where you can sense a little bit of that all-wheel drive is if you really put your foot in, I mean, go seeking the carpet on the back half of a corner, you can just now and then sense a little shove from the rear that, that lets you know the Haldex is doing its job. And now that I'm sailing through these corners at high speed, I'm wanting more direct feedback from this steering wheel. Because I think if it weren't such a front wheel drive bias to me, I'd like it more. Dynamically, the S3 is good in pretty much every category, but it isn't amazing. It's staid and precise and well done, but not a laugh. This is not a car I'd take to the track. It's not a car I'd really take to the canyons. But if you like a fun car with a little bit of performance that you can take kind of in normal life and you want an executive cruiser that's gonna be really fast and a little bit agile, this is a great car for that. There is a lot to like about the S3. I just wish cars like the M235i didn't exist or, you know, the Golf R, it's little brother or sibling or whatever you wanna call it. I kinda wish it were a standalone machine and kind of doing its own thing. I can't really explain to you why I was so excited about the S3. I just was. I came into this review like a little excited kid. I wanted the S3 to be amazing. I expected it to be amazing. It's good. I kind of feel like this car has a soul. 
it's that little intangible, that step past, wow, this is fast and fun, it comes alive and it suits me as a driver. And I know I'm gushing, but why not? You know, it's rare that we find cars that just hit every box across the board and speak to either Todd or I as drivers. I just want to drive this car. I mean, this is the all-purpose recipe for a really fun car. Rear wheel drive, lots of power, excellent balance, stick shift. It really is going to feel like the better enthusiast car than that S3, which is less of a strike at the S3 than it is just doing the recipe right here in the Beamer. You know, in the podcast, these two cars don't come to mind very often. We don't recommend them very often yeah. to our listeners. Yeah. And here's the reason is, I think simply because of price. You know well, that? We're talking about the hottest version of each of these companies' base model, which is a weird it's a great way oddball. of putting it. Now, I mean, here's the thing. Overseas, yes, you can get an A1, you can get a BMW 1 Series. I'd love to have a 1 Series here so we can oh, talk four-door to four-door. But this is the base models made as hot as possible, and suddenly, we're at 50 grand. Sure. But here in the U.S., you get the hottest, cheapest Beamer and the hottest, cheapest Audi. Guess what? You're here. So I've owned an Audi. I come from, as you know, German car love, snobbery, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> I love them. And so I came in thinking, all right, I really hope to like the Audi. I still am not convinced about BMW, but we'll just have to see. Yeah. But my question is, where where do you stand? Would well, you buy either of here's these? Here's the interesting thing. You say you kind of wanted to like the Audi. I'm going to go a step further. I can't explain to you why. I came in wanting the Audi to really thrill me. I was ecstatic about really? it. Really? I wanted to feel that way about the Golf R, you know that? Well, funny you bring up the Golf R, because the more I drove this S3, the more I liked the Golf R. Golf R? Out of both of these cars, the Golf R is the car you'd buy? Well, I mean, the Golf R is $10,000 cheaper right. than these right. cars. If you want something that feels like a nice executive cruiser that is a great like GT car plus is a little bit of fun, I think the Golf R is a better buy than both of these. I think that's sure. very true. And I don't think the STIs of the world compete in this category because they're not nearly nice enough. I feel like that Golf R does almost fit in this category better and is a much better buy and it's the same running gear as the S3. Having said that, there's no question this Beamer is more fun to drive. I agree. My first choice is the Beamer. I you're going to buy this Beamer, aren't you? I liked it. I like the 228 on track. Yeah. And here's the slightly hotter, not yeah. slightly, actually Significantly far, hotter, also far with hotter a manual version, transmission. Yeah. With manual transmission, and you've heard me now, I came away just in love with this car, and so now for me... You kept fighting me to drive the Beamer. Yeah, I, I noticed. <laughs> yes, I did. Yeah. <laughs> but look, both of these cars have to be on our list. Mm -hmm. I think it's... Definitely in the category of, you know what, if you do spend the money, you're not going to be unhappy. I think they're on the list of, go ahead and get these cars. Mm -hmm. Because, yeah, you've got this budget. If you can, if you can spring for these cars, can. they are going to be that much better in terms of driving experience. Well, but back to cost, though, I will say this. While these are expensive, they're significantly cheaper than the S4 or Here the we M3. Go. So that yeah. is the sweet spot for them. I would say to you, this is the better size than the S4 or the M3. I prefer I this scale. You're in now below 3,000 uh, pounds. You've got a car that actually has this, the size of the old E46 everybody loves. I think this is the better buy if I were in that M3 shopping space. I would step down a category and get these. What would you do with your $50,000? Not saying it's a bad car. Not saying it's not fun or fast or any of those things. But I'm looking for that intangible thing as well. The thing that just makes you want to come back to the car all the time and drive it all the time. That's what I'm looking for. And that's what's missing in the S3. The thing is, this just really isn't as willing as that Beamer to go fast. And because it really feels enough like the Golf R, which is far cheaper and I like the interior more, I find myself going, S3, good. Rather have the Golf R. Rather save the money, get a car that feels the same. Now, we're privileged to drive a lot of press cars and a lot of private owner's cars. With the press cars, very rarely do I want a car to stay. It is the BMW M235i that I wish wasn't going back. 
this BMW, I would take it to the track, I would run it in canyons, I would do all the kind of driving that I love, I would do it in this car and thoroughly enjoy myself. So for that reason, it has to win. It's not about the manual gearbox, it's actually more about the driver involvement in every other way. The seating position for me personally is far better here, and I just love the way this car rotates.